destruction ritual was very important. For one, to challenge your beliefs. That is always important. Sometimes I think we misunderstand or misconstrue the left-hand path as uh, some just, you know, I'm just doing shadow work to overcome my, my pain and trauma. No. A large part of the work is also not just dealing with your pain, traumas, and issues and things of that nature, but it's also dealing with your program. It's not called the adversarial path for no reason. It's called the adversarial path because it is exactly that. To have an adversary means you must go against the established norm, the established morality, the established, you know, thing, all the established hodgepodge that we've been taught. You must be able to challenge yourself to investigate and therefore destroy all of the vestiges that you came into the left-hand path with. Meaning, if you were spiritual, New Age, Wiccan, OTO, or anything like that, although OTO does have some left-hand path work in it, but not much, then you have to challenge yourself to let it go. That doesn't mean you have to let go of all the teachings and destroy all the teachings. That means destroy the idea that you know everything when you know nothing. Anybody who really has walked any path for a certain amount of years understands that as much as I know, I know nada. I know nothing. And therefore, when you encounter this ritual, the destruction ritual, some people missed, they made a mistake. They thought the destruction ritual was attacking certain things, things of that nature, which I'll let Demetrius get into a lot of that. Since he is the one that created the destruction ritual, so he's best to answer those questions. However, understand that the destruction ritual is something that me and him discussed that we feel is necessary moving forward for those in the Patreon classes. It's hard for you to get. 100% results if you're still holding on to that side, the right-hand path, the new age, the conscious community, and all the blah, blah, blah crap you come in here with. It's very difficult. You literally have to be stripped of everything in order for this to really take hold and work the way it's supposed to. I've been in the left-hand path for years. Demetrius has been in the left-hand path for years. But guess what? Even as many years we've been in it, we still feel the effects of doing rituals. We still go through the whole process of what it means to be destroyed, what it means to be annihilated. Then, not in an annihilation sense of annihilating your ego and, and, and destroying your ego as in the right hand path, but rather to exalt yourself, to exalt the true self. But in order to exalt the true self, you must eliminate the false self. What is the false self? The false self is the false idea of who you are that was created to survive in this society. You were created, you created a mask, a personality, an identity to survive in this society. That's not you. That is who you think you are, but that's not you. That is who you had to create to survive in this society. So now it's like unmasking the false self and connecting with the true self. And the true self, nine times out of 10, does not give a shit about a lot of the shit you presently care about wearing the mask of society. The true self cares about power, not in a sense of power, like controlling the masses and all this crap, power over self, the power to control self, transform self and elevate self. That's what the true self cares about. 
It's not about, oh, I know this and I know that. So what? Everybody knows something. Who cares? You, that's irrelevant. What is relevant is are you willing to face everything you think you know and do the work to see how much you really are programmed to hold on to old ideologies, philosophies, beliefs, and anything else. And let me say this, because I have a class coming up probably next week. And then I'm going to segue to Demetrius. The name of the class coming up next week, this is for everybody, is going to be practice without knowledge is dangerous. Knowledge without practice is equally dangerous. And stay tuned for that next week because I'm going to come with the gloves off and gloves on and step on lips and, and punch some lips if I have to. Because honestly, I think people misunderstand that. Practicing something without thorough knowledge is dangerous to you because you can open up doorways and gateways that can F you up. Demetrius. Please explain for the masses what truly was the purpose of the destruction ritual and what did you feel would come out of it? Because once you answer that, I'm going to kind of share anonymous, anonymously some of the things I heard from the rituals that you can discuss further. All right. Well, the, the purpose of it was just as in its title, it's destruction. Um, and it's the destruction of a psycho-spiritual um, construct that we hold on the moon. And like I said, that ritual is a very simple template that can apply to a lot of different things. Because um, there's a lot of these constructs that we hold onto in spirituality that are equally gonna cause some problems and issues. But what happens is, is when you start destroying things, you're releasing your hold on that energy that releases chaos into a space. One of the things that I've been learning about here lately, it is necessary for you to be a vampire on this path. You have to be. That's why you see it everywhere. You have to devour that chaos. Because remember, Set stakes the serpent of hell, controls that. Some say kills it, slays it every morning on the bark of Ra. There's a reason for that. You can't let that run loose like that because it'll it'll wreck you. And that's what happens to some people. They've brought all kinds of other stuff and you know different things. When you do rituals like this, that kind of comes up. It blows up in your face for you to deal with and to handle, not to fall in your face and whine about it, <laughs> you know, and just say, oh, I'm gonna hang on to this as tightly as possible. This is what puts people in the loony bin. And it happens time and time again on this side of the fence. Or they go running back to the church saying, oh, the devil's over there, it's for real. Yeah, but it's not going away because you are taking that with you even back into the church. You just did some work and now that's been activated and now you're running back into the church, you're still gonna have, have that stuff there. So you might as well stay where you are, deal with it, handle it, clear it and keep on moving. But yeah, the, the primary goal that was to break the chains that we have on these particular concepts and freeing ourselves from it, regaining power, regaining energy. You know, that's not to say that no, we're not going to tap into the lunar current or anything like that. That's actually incorrect. We are going to be tapping into the lunar current, but just in a little bit more powerful way, clearer way, and truer way. Just breaking away from this this construct struct of belief and, and uh, ideas and um, I guess I would say even egregoric forces because an egregore is something that is um, enough thought is put into, it takes a life of its own. You know, Santa Claus would be an egregore. Mickey Mouse would be an egregore. Because believe it or not, you can tap into that garbage. It's crazy. But that's just enough. There's a lot of egregore, a lot of energy as created this particular entity or ideal that's out there. And that's what we deal with sometimes in society is that instead of we dictating to ourselves on how we're gonna think and act, society dictates that we follow suit, which locks us further into the matrix. If you're on the left-hand path, you, it is your desire to break free from that. That's why we have set as 
basically, he, we, for lack of a better term, a role model. He broke free and became his own God. That is our goal, to reach that apotheosis, separating from the herd and elevating above that concept. 